Hi, my name is Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Today, I'm going to be doing something that so many of you seem to enjoy. And you know what? I enjoy the challenge. And that is to create a piece of music in a limited period of time using a beautiful library. And today's beautiful library of choice is Vespertone by Teletone Audio. They sent me this library well, weeks ago, because it came out quite a while ago, and I'm sorry to them that I have taken so long to create a video. Um, they're very kind in sending me these libraries for free, and they've also offered to give you a 10% discount if you use the code DANKEEN at checkout, which is very, very kind. I believe that applies to all purchases, um, and... Uh, in fact, it's been so long since they sent it to me that they've actually come out with another library since on Dean, which is actually very, very beautiful as well. But I'm going to be using this multicolored, beautiful library today uh, and that one alone. Now, I think because of the style of the library, it doesn't need something, it doesn't need 40 minutes. I'm going to give myself 30 minutes um, to, to come up with something. In case you don't know, this library is really four in one. You've got a Celeste, Rhodes, Vibraphone, and Wurlitzer. And within that, you've got all of these little controls, which are really, really powerful. Lots of mic positions, but then you've got your body, soul, and spirit. And then there's even an arpeggiator. So just before I start this, I just want to give you a little, um, a little preview of what we're about to play with. So if I just play this, this is the Celeste. This is the basic bog standard sound. Which is not bog standard at all, it sounds really, really lovely. As soon as I start turning up this body knob... Which sounds really, really great. And you can hear there's so many little gradations in between that. If I turn up the soul knob, it does this. Beautiful. And then finally, spirit. And so when we play with all of these together, it sounds really, really lovely. Now, of course, that's just one. And then we've also got a whole load of design patches as well. And that's where I'm going to start today. I'm going to open up this Big Sky one. I've played with it, I like the library, but I haven't played with it that many times. So you're gonna kind of be learning the library with me at this point, but let's just go. Okay, so let's hear what this one sounds like. Okay, and there's quite a long decay on that. Okay, I'm going to start with just a couple of elements and then see where the harmony wants to take it. Uh, now, what, time, what tempo are we at? That seems good to me. Okay, let's just add another layer on top of that and let's make it something a little bit more padded. What's this one doing? 
Mm. It's kind of the opposite of pad. I guess I actually, you know what? I could just turn off the arpeggiator. Now let's try something else. That's nice. Quite lucky with the harmony choices there. Uh, the bass line was a bit strange, but it worked. But one thing I didn't like was how, uh, how much it fluttered. So let's just pull this down and take off the wow for now. That's nice. Sounds cool. Okay, I'm going to add some vibraphone now. So annoying, I had like a nice little rhythm set up and then uh, just totally forgot to... I think it should come in there. Oh, you know what? It's actually copied over a couple of things. I don't know if you noticed that. If you do Shift R, it just it can sometimes add every bit of captured recording you've done. So I'm actually going to need to start that again. But now I've got a clear idea. I like that. That sounds really, really nice. So let's quantize that. And again, only quantize to 80% because otherwise it can sound a little bit forced. And I'm actually going to need to do the same thing here as well. It's not very much because I played so in time, uh, but that little difference is that kind of human element that's really important. We need a little bit more context there. Let me just, um, I just want to get my ducks in a row here and check. Oh, this one was Big Sky. And then this one was IBM. You know, my granddad worked for IBM. A little bit of trivia for you. And then soft mallets there. Okay. So I think what we might need next is the roads because the roads sounds beautiful. Let's just go back to the regular 
patch for the roads. And in your own time. Natural distortion there, sorry about that. That's nice. Okay. Sorry, messed that up a little bit. Okay. Oh, I did the same thing again. I'm so sorry. Sorry, feeling cheeky there. I just want to check here. There's, there's a little frequency that I'm not quite sure about. I'm actually just going to cut off a lot of these high frequencies and the low ones as well. The frequency that I find is most often to cause problems is around 270. It's often just a build up for me around there. around there. That's quite nice. I feel like we need some arpeggiators now. So I'm going to try and find something that is soft, like a Wurlitzer. Such a lovely sound. And let's get these. Now what I like about this is if you hold it down, just the notes on their own, we get a normal arpeggiator. But as soon as I hold down the sustain pedal, it acts as if the sustain pedal is down and that the arpeggiator is doing, is doing the mechanics. So the arpeggiator is acting in the same way, but the sustain pedal is being suppressed as if the instrument had the sustain pedal down. Whereas in a lot of cases, if you hold that down with an arpeggiator on another MIDI track, you might find that 
you can just take your hands off and it will continue doing the same pattern. But this isn't the case. It's not, it's not, what's it doing? It's not sustaining the arpeggiating, it's sustaining the notes. And that's quite a cool sound actually. So let's see what happens when we do that. Sorry, we're not in some alien world. Sorry, there was a good idea there and I don't know what it was. Yeah, I quite like that. Sorry, I should have done... Oh no, we're stuck. Okay, uh, yeah, I should have simplified that slightly. Let's just do simple notes. Beautiful. Um, let's just remove that little pedal there because that was unnecessary. Sometimes I like to mute things and just hear what stuff sounds like by itself. And quite often it's just about like sculpting things and, you know, being really careful about where particular frequencies are hitting. More often than not, I actually like to pull the stereo image in slightly. and then expand it with reverb afterwards. There are clever ways that you can do that. Also, a big thing for me at the moment, which I'm going to make an entirely different video on, is the idea of cutting your high frequencies and then massively boosting them uh, with other reverbs and effects. I think that can be really, really powerful. See, there's some stuff going on there that I'm not sure about. And I think the main reason is there are all these kind of aftertones. So if I massively cut this off here, what I would then do is compensate by adding a little chorus. And I might even consider might even consider uh, a little satin.
Sounds quite cool. Now I wonder if we can add anything else that's going to give a little extra section or something. What does this one sound like? Yeah, I don't really want arpeggiators now. I want something big. And I guess I need to disable this EQ. It's just quiet. No time to die. Good film. Oh, sorry. I this is all uh, velocity sensitive, isn't it? Okay, I've got an idea. Um, should go down to an F there. What do you think of this? Okay, I think if we just like make all of these the same, and then bring them down, it kind of narrows the velocity scope there. do four, just four notes, then the pattern will always be the same. I feel like that was supposed to be, was it supposed to be F major? Yeah, it was. Not to worry. Now I need to uh, turn these all up and then turn them back down again. Right now. Cool. 
you know what, maybe we need a different bass sound for this bit so that it really hits home. Um, now, what would we use? Mm. This one sounds cool. Let's do one of these types of things, because then we can get down a little bit lower. I'm tuning down, but then I'm tuning up in the track so it accesses different samples. For some reason, that means I just forget what I've just played. Oh dear. Hmm. CPU. Interesting about that CPU thing. Um, I've had some very, very strange um, issues lately with Logic. Since I since I moved it native, I've had quite a few issues actually. And I have lots of plugins, I know, but still disappointed about that. Again, something else I'll make a video about later. When I figured out why, I think it's just a couple of key. Um, a couple of key companies, which I won't na make the, I won't name, uh, but they're breaking waves. Okay, once we've just padded this out, we'll be golden. I'm slowly learning this very basic eight chord progression. Oh, I haven't even saved it. Oh well. Yeah, let's do some nice little... clicking and popping in there. Uh, that must have been because of whatever CPU issues I'm having. Um, I don't know why that is, I really don't. I mean, look, I've only got four tracks playing at once and it's not that intensive a library, I don't think. Found the sweet spot up there. I'm sorry, this is very, very disruptive. Let me just change this IO buffer size to something silly. Oh. 
<sighs> yeah, I really don't know. I don't know about that. And I hope that you can still hear me. I presume you can. We're, we're still recording, so let's go. out there. It feels a little bit messy towards the end, but hopefully it'll be okay. I uh, just need to add some of this. We just duplicate this track. In fact, that can actually just stay the same, I think. Well, there we go. Um, time is up. So what I would do then um, is I would put my bases in a base stack. I'm going to do a video, don't worry. I'm going to do a video about, uh, about uh, mastering and stuff because it's always the last thing that happens. Um, and then, you know, what? on the rest of these, I'm just going to add a, just a keys stem as an example here. Uh, and something that I quite often do is I'll add my DK Air, which just adds a little bit of fizzle at the top. Um, so yeah, let's have a listen through. Let me just engage this and then see how it sounds. Okay, well, there we go. Not too bad in 30 minutes. Um, now, I guess it should be kind of obvious, but this would just be a sketch. I'd then go in and, you know, play around with lots of flares. I want to know from you guys, what do you think about the way these videos are made? Would you prefer that I just always do videos like this? When I do videos like this, would you prefer that I just make videos like this, where I'm just starting from the beginning and going all the way through? Or would you prefer that I also do videos where I take this sketch and then push it into some other kind of sound world. Because the one little bit of reticence I have about making pieces like this is that you might think that this is all I can do, um, but bearing in mind that this is only within half an hour, I can't really go very much deeper than this um, at this at this stage. So is that something that you'd be interested in for me to continue and do longer things? Maybe do a piece in two hours? Would you really sit around and wait for two hours for me to write something? I don't know. I'd be very interested uh, to hear your thoughts. Anyway, thank you so much to Teletone Audio for giving me this library. And again, if you want to download it, you can get 10% off if you use the code DANKEEN at checkout. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.